My name is Sherry Cannon and I work at Gateway Technical College as a recruit student ambassador and I live in Racine, Wisconsin. My name is Thomas Wassenaar. Uh, my job, I, I'm an automotive technician. Tiffany, LPN, and part-time front desk at a hotel, yeah. My name is Blake Zayde. My job is a Office 365 analyst. My name is uh, Michael Pilares. I work as a senior designer in an engineering company here in Minnesota, and I live in Maplewood. My name is Doug Christian. I'm a requirements management analyst at an aerospace engineering firm, and I'm from Lamont, Iowa. I would go to Mass with the family, but it was more like we were forced to go to Mass, so it was more of a burden to go to Mass because, you know, my mom would be like, all right, everybody get ready. I was brought up in a church. My mother and father first took me. The teachings that they taught didn't, they weren't the same as what my Bible said. And I told my mom that you give me the Bible, and I compared it. I felt like I was lied to. I always believed in God. I always believed that Christ was his son. And so I was not very religious, but I grew up in a Baptist church. I'm not that religious because I only go to a Catholic church during my birthdays and like special occasions like Christmas. As a child, my parents did take us to a variety of churches from Pentecostal to Baptist to Lutheran, um, but probably by my early teens we didn't attend church. I met some people and they were talking about God and, and how they take God to the bikers. They, they talked about this club, God Squad, uh, it's a Christian motorcycle club, it's interesting. Uh, so I, uh, I started to ride around with them. We went to a few clubs. It had the best of both worlds for me. I could smoke, I could drink, and I could share the Word of God. My mom, when we were small children, used to um, take us to the church. And so it was a Baptist church. And so I used to, um, I don't know, just felt like it wasn't real because people would be screaming and shouting and um, throwing cloaks over, you know, the ones who were screaming and shouting. Although I was baptized in the church, but I never really, like, followed. I did believe in God, but I was one of those people that believed that you didn't have to be in church to believe in God. That you could say your own prayers and that that was sufficient, but that's really all it took to, to be a Christian. I was just lost with it, especially with my son. So we're both still just finding our own way, our own connection with God. I had vaguely heard of it only from my travels in the Philippines. I had seen these huge temples and they really stood out. And so I was curious when I first saw those but that was purely from seeing it. The only prior experience that I had about hearing the church um, was when my mom was uh, watching it on TV, on um, INC TV. It was a little bit different uh, just because when she was watching it, it was usually uh, two ministers and that was sort of like one reading uh, the uh, Bible verses and the other one uh, sort of explaining or expounding upon those verses. I was invited, I worked with a lady at, at the job at the time, I was a cashier at a gas station. And the lady that I was working with, her son was friends with one of the members, and one of the members' son. And so she was having a Bible study at her house. And like I said, I had just gone through a, a great loss in my life, and so she invited me to her house to a Bible study. My cousin got married to, um, I guess his family is uh, Iglesia, and um, she just brought it up. The service is very different 
So I really like that it's straight to the point and it's just, you know, verses like Bible verses and how explaining it to us so we understand it and how it can relate to our everyday lives. So that was very, it was very, that what, that's what intrigued me the most. We made a, an appointment to meet with the resident worker and we went to his office and sat down and he just started to talk to me a little bit about the church, um, how they do things of uh, ask a question and we answer it with the Bible. And, and, and so as we started talking and he, he made me feel very relaxed. Um, you know, I didn't feel like I was being pressured in the sense of you need to join this church. Um, it was more, I want to introduce you to our church, let you learn about it. When I was in Italy, way back 2002, during that time, I met Sister Ria. During our um, conversation, she informed me that she is a member of Iglesia Ni Cristo. So I don't pay attention to it because I'm just thinking, I'm just looking for somebody to talk with. February of 2014 was when I was um, invited to go and uh, that was when my grandpa uh, sort of invited me after um, my mom passed away and because uh, he was a uh, Bible student at the time and um, had already um, visited the, the locale of Chicago um, after my mom passed away he invited me and was like how about you come along with me to one of the uh, worship services. The first observation, obviously, was it was orderly. Uh, it was very well uh, structured, and you could see that everyone was quiet. Um, people were you know, self-contemplating, meditating, um, saying personal prayers, and, and you know, there's hymns, you know, playing in the background. Uh, I noticed that there weren't any like images on any of the windows, um, as far as orderliness goes. Uh, I noticed that um, you couldn't just sit anywhere, you had to sit uh, row by row, uh, and then the male and female were um, separated, and I thought that was uh, pretty, pretty interesting. When I first walked in uh, to the chapel, I noticed the, uh, the deaconess, their uniform, and um, the solemnity of it is, is, you know, it's very, uh, people are very attentive. Uh, also, even after, I, I really liked the, the, the welcome that I got. Um, my first worship service in Italy was, it's, it's very good because um, since it is a group worship service, they provided a video from uh, Central and it is in Tagalog. So I really felt like very special. In listening to the minister, uh, you know, tell the lesson from the Bible, it just made me reflect on everything that I had been reading. He was kind of explaining it all out to me that everything came from the Bible. I mean, he didn't like read one verse and go on all day long with that one verse. And so that kind of made me intrigued, like, wow, you know, he, it's almost as if God was telling him to tell me these things. And so that was the thing. And then when he asked if I wanted to do Bible study, I was like, yes. <laughs> I had a question for him, and, and that was, well, what Bible do you use? And, and he said, well, explain the Church of Christ does not have its own Bible. It's the same Bibles that are used by, by other uh, religions. And that, that's actually what piqued my interest. Carl Robert sent me a link to, it was a YouTube video. And um, I was watching it and my son were watching it and it was, about um, the church helping, um, you know, the, the people that needed help, um, donating and all the, the baptism around the world, like everybody that was going through the Bible study and like even in the midst of the pandemic, 
we were still trying to help anybody who needed help. When I attended church or worship services prior, you know, other, I never felt that sp spiritual feeling in there. It was simply I'm being given a lesson according to the person that's giving the lesson, and I'm supposed to use that information to, you know, lead a better life. But when I attended that first worship service, you know, I, first, you know, all the answers came from the Bible. You know, and I, you know, I was told, don't, don't listen to this because this is what I'm telling you. you know, it's because this is what's in the Bible. And, and so that meant a lot to me. But I, I felt a, 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 you know, a sense of of comfort, I felt a sense of this is where I need to be that I had never felt before. It was a Baptist church and the minister kept calling um, Christ God's son. And so and just everything that I had learned from the church, so I approached him at the end of the sermon and asked him, why are you telling your members that Christ is God. He's not the God's son. He's the son of God. And this minister, he was so upset with me. Like, who's been telling you this? I said, now, if Christ was God, why would he be looking up to himself saying, Father, let this cup pass from me? And he was so livid. The teachings like, made sense. Um, like There wasn't any sort of contradictions and you know, everything was so explained. One of the things that like really stuck out to me was um, the how the, um, Neil Glesnicker still doesn't believe in the uh, the Trinity. Uh, and it's one of the first things I noticed, just because like growing up, that was sort of the um, the thing that was um, exposed to me the most, uh, that I would, like heard a lot about, and would always mention. It was like the you know God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And here, when I was in the Bible study, they mentioned how. Um, all those three are like separate and the only God that we have is the true God which is the Father. Through the WebEx I would listen to um, the lessons and I would it's just I like how everything that um, they base everything off of the Bible like any questions that you would have all the answers they give you is backed up by the Bible that's one of the strongest suit I like about that that's what made me really join and finally just you know despite despite all the other people that are saying that no you shouldn't like, you know but yeah that's what made me really because this was just straight from the bible your life your questions the answers are all in the bible I've been studying scripture I hadn't heard the pristine gospel. I still hear new things in worship services today. I may have heard the scripture before, but I hadn't heard it like this and understood it like this. And when I was going through Bible studies, it was like I couldn't wait. Well, I decided that before that worship service was even over. And I went and signed up as a Bible student and immediately started my lessons. And, and I lived an hour and a half away from the chapel. So it was the resident worker driving to my house in order to give me lessons. It was me driving to the chapel in order to receive the lessons. That might seem you know, like, okay, an hour and a half. I know people travel that. Two months prior, I had open heart surgery. Uh, an hour and a half drive was a significant drive for me. It was not easy, um, but I, I felt, I truly felt that that's the right thing to do. It's what I needed to do. The turning point of why I joined the church was because um, my son. My son and his questions about the religion and his questions about how he should be 
his questions about the Bible. I just couldn't answer them. So going through the Bible study, I would just take notebooks. Like I have a full notebook of the notes and during worship service and writing down all the verses and um, all the questions I could have and where they would be answered. It was during the time we were having a Bible study, I, I caught something that was said about the offerings. But I, I stopped Brother Ferdy and I said, did you, did you just say that the church buys houses of worship? When I started my Bible lessons, um, the minister told me that if you have questions, you can ask. So I have a lot of questions and uh, I was surprised because all of my questions were answered through the Bible. So everything came from the Bible. So I was surprised and I felt that this is the really like the true church. That's for me that I'm looking for. So when I came back to the Philippines for a vacation and I'm really interested. So what I did was I resigned. So I left my company. So it's a big sacrifice for me. So my parents got worried because I have a big um, opportunity in, uh, in Europe or in, in Italy. But I left that company so that I can finish my uh, Bible lessons. They disowned me. Um, they don't invite me to any family dinners. Or, you know, it's been hard. Um, especially with my grandma, because I'm close to my grandma. When I first started attending the church and, and attending the Bible studies, um, one of my brothers was very surprised. Um, he is not religious. He, he is a, a very strong-minded atheist. And he would send me messages about um, blink twice if you need me to take you out of the cult. Some very strongly, he would try to do it in a joking manner to him, but he you know, was constantly, you know, why are you doing this? Why? Most people said, well, you know, <laughs> that's a cult. <laughs> so you hear that a lot. I still hear that. People whisper it to me now, though. <laughs> they, they say, I, I, I heard your church is a cult. So after that, they're saying, I might listen. We're going to have to. I've had people turn around and say that maybe we should listen to your Bible studies or the Bible studies in the church. It's, you're more than welcome. I'll keep sending the links. We have two churches three blocks from your house. You know, why, why aren't you going there? We, you know, we want you to be in our church here. There's a lot of hindrances, especially uh, for my parents. They are very religious in the, inside the Catholic Church, especially my father. My father is a lay minister uh, in the Catholic Church. And when he learned that um, I'm attending a Bible lesson for uh, Iglesia Ni Cristo, my dad did not talk to me for like how many months. I was working two jobs at the time and I was really struggling because being a single parent, you know, my daughter um, trying to take care of her, trying to pay bills, trying to go to church, be active. And one of the sisters in the church came to me and she said, hey, um, I don't know if you're aware, but the Navy base is hiring. Well, they're doing a training and it's free for a dental assistant. And yes, and she told me that. And so for some reason, as, as high as my rent was, God made a way for me to be able to do that training, um, to work the two jobs, to, <laughs> to have Bible study, and to attend the worship service. And so for all those things that, those were difficult times for me. But with all of that, he made a way. My baptism was on July 12, uh, 2014. And 
Uh, I was like really happy uh, because I was I felt like you know this is a, a new um, a new way to start my, uh, my life and just be able to start over um, and you know I was like really happy because like, all the brethren were there you know and congratulating me and it just felt like you know a one big one big family. March 28th that was my baptism. I was excited to be able to be a member already because I was baptized but I was able to say I am Iglesia Ni Cristo, so that was exciting. My baptism was um, May 22nd, 1999. I know it, and it's still so clear to me of that feeling. And even after I was baptized, every time I knew that there was gonna be a baptism, I always drove to Chicago to uh, be there for the baptism. Oh, I remember it very well. Um, I was baptized on Saturday, March 31st, 2017. I felt as if all of the burdens, all of the, the problems, everything that wa was giving me stress, it, it was all washed away. Uh, I, I truly felt that I would started a new life and that Everything in my past was exactly that. It was my past. It was a past life. And I now had a, a, a new life to live. I was baptized May 29, 2004. And as I always uh, keep telling like the others that this is the true church, I felt really nice on that day that I, f I felt that all of my problems were gone. All of my questions were answered already. So it's just, I'm very happy and grateful. Ever since I joined the church, the things that changed in my life has been my decisions making. Um, I think clearly it's um, my relationship with God. I speak to Him more than I used to. It's a daily thing. It's an, more than a daily thing, it's like every hour, every minute, <laughs> you know, it's just like, am I doing the right thing? And, you know, just please always keep giving me strength to be strong and, you know, keep defending what I believe in. Once I started as a Bible student and, and as it continued and even after I finished those lessons, I could already see differences in my life. I could see that when I ran into something difficult, that instead of trying to find the solution through friends or, or online or, or whatever it may have been, you know, that I could pray. And, and I did, and we started to do that as a family. And you know, we still ran into the same types of problems that we would have ran into before we became, you know, members of the Church of Christ. That didn't change. But what changed was how we handled that. God has opened so many doors for me in, in my life and transformed me. And so in order for me to continue to have that feeling, I have to, I have to make sure that He's first in everything that I do. And I say, I don't care if people are looking or not, he knows my heart. He knows what I'm gonna do before I even do it, so there's nothing you can hide from him. I know that, that God is gonna provide what I need. He's never going to let me not have what I need in my life. It might be difficult, but I'll have it. At the same time, when I run, when I have those problems, I know that I can pray to God. And, and that he'll answer my prayers. That doesn't mean he's gonna answer it in the way that I'm expecting. It doesn't mean that I'm going to get everything that I ask for. But it does mean I'm going to get what I need. One of the major things that, uh, that changed would be uh, just sort of like how I see things. Um, I think before you just sort of like, I used to just do whatever I want, um, whenever, and I never really like thought about it. Uh, but now I sort of like think uh, before I do anything, 
And one of the things that I do a lot is like always pray um, before I go out just because um, now I know that you know, obviously this world is not safe uh, for everyone and it's always good to have that reassurance to um, call on to our Almighty God and ask for you know, protection. Through the pandemic, as far as what God has done for us, you know, He's protected each one of His servants. I think that the church has, has kept us sane. I'll be honest, it's, it's been insane. Sometimes you feel cabin fever because of the lockdowns. And, but throughout the pandemic, I, I've been able to come here and guard the church. Um, we've continued our activities in the church, whether it be via WebEx, We've been able to constantly lean on the church. The church has always continued with the activities, uh, again, via WebEx, but it's something. And ultimately, hang on to the promises of God, knowing that he'll protect us. Our church administration also made a way that we can still have our worship service, where we can still feed our soul. Uh, and. So that worship service became even more important because that was how I stayed connected, how my family stayed connected with our beliefs, how we continued to be edified in our faith. We received the teachings that we needed. They'll be able to worship. That is, that is so important. And I loved it when we were able to come to the chapel. We have worship service in the midweek, we have worship service in the weekend. So twice a week, we are being reminded. So if we have problems, if we have questions, if you attend the worship service, you will find answers right away. For those that are looking for the truth or for those that think they may already know the truth, but have been introduced to another option, I would say, have an open mind. Listen with an open mind and an open heart because there is only one truth. There is only one true God. And as you listen to these lessons, as you ask your questions and see that your questions are going to be answered through the Bible, ask those same questions in your current religion and see how they're answered. Is it answered by the opinion of someone? Or can they go into the Bible, show you the verses that actually answer your question so that you know it is God's words that you're going to live your life by? If you're looking for the truth, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've been through or are going through, ultimately, God uses our lives everything we've been through, good and bad. And when you come to God, He's going to use it for the good. And when you find the truth, which you will find the truth here in the Church of Christ. Listen to God's message. Come to a Bible study. Come witness worship service and make your own decision. It is your own decision. That's all you got to do is take a leap of faith for anyone that is searching for the truth is to have an open mind and to ask a lot of questions and make sure that when those questions are being answered that those answers are truthful and they're coming from the Bible.